In this video, I'm going to play RimWorld as a colony of 100 children. The goal is survival. See through as many of the youths as possible from childhood to adulthood with minimal casualties. In RimWorld, people age from infancy to toddlers to children, teenagers, and then full-grown adults at an accelerated rate. Would it be possible to survive like this with 100 of them all the way from youth? So I began with my first run, infants. What's better in the spirit of the challenge than spawning in with 100 infants? Start with nothing, and spawn in via drop pods from outer space. I wrote an auto hotkey script to generate 100 pawns, selected Cassandra Classic as my storyteller, and then I crash landed on the planet with all 100 babies. So it began with the first day. All of the infants spawned in from outer space. They crash landed on the dirt from their drop pods, and there they lay writhing in the dirt. Gradually, they all got hungrier. The babies were just stuck in place, so they just lay there, getting hungrier and hungrier by the hour. Normally, that would be it. That would be the end of the scenario, and I would have just stared at the hundred babies as they got even hungrier and hungrier. Then I would have restarted. But some of the babies, as it turned out, were nearly toddlers. And I got lucky when one of them experienced a growth moment all of a sudden. Grew from baby size to toddler size, and got up and started walking around with new capabilities. After a few hours, one of the infants experienced a growth moment, and got up to start walking around and taking care of himself. On the second day, the infants were still lying there, growing increasingly hungry. But the child, Nick, moved north to locate food for survival. Since he was incapable of almost every chore and labor, the only option was to fight a squirrel. Nick slayed the squirrel and earned himself a meal, but at the steep cost of his mortal life, for he had been badly scratched on his right ear. All the babies grew hungrier and hungrier. But then another baby grew up named Protein. But when he tried, he was unable to medically tend Nick. So they just lied down on the ground out of exhaustion. Then another child named Nikolai grew up and started carrying the other infants to safety by the mountainside. One by one, Nikolai carried the babies near the mountainside to help them. After his failed efforts to help the other babies, Nikolai broke down and devoured the corpse of a fallen ibex doe. But he was unfortunately mauled by a rat, driven into a state of madness. Then the same rat mauled another child named Alvarado. Just when it seemed that everyone was going to die, a mysterious man in black named Gil emerged from the shadows off the edge of the map to save the day. But he actually didn't save the day, and unfortunately, he didn't even arrive on time to save anyone at all, so he just left off the other map edge. But not before he slayed the rat that had caused so much unnecessary pain. Attempt number two. This time I kept my expectations low, regenerated all 100 children, now as actual children instead of babies. Then I wrote another auto hotkey script to go fast and make 100 kids. Now this worked. 100 children landed on the planet from outer space. All the kids were bad at every job, so I just gave them tasks they were passionate about. And so I found the most fertile soil, and I gathered the children in the planting of rice above the ground. They began to work like elves, deconstructing the ruins chopping down the trees, gathering materials, mining the mountainside, and generally engaging in productive behavior. I created a sleep zone with a hundred sleeping spots for them to lie upon at night. Then I designated a dump zone for chunks and began roofing all of our supplies. At first the children seemed happy and productive, but then they started drifting off task. Childish behaviors kicked in. Drawings were drawn, clouds were watched, and I began to realize that boredom would ultimately destroy the mines and then the bodies of all 100 children. I tried to counteract it by building a dining room, but probably not soon enough, for hunger would be the slow and insidious killer this time around. As they retired for slumber, a ravenous hunger gripped them one by one. The next day, surfacing the animal spirits they'd suppressed until the wild. Finally, one snapped. Arnold and Twiggy went mad from hunger and then threw hands. Nothing more than bruises, though. The children planted, finished the dining room, and then insulting spree. My strategy of ignoring anything that went wrong was working, though, and most of the children remained productive despite the lack of food throughout the second day. Well, it mostly worked until everyone was on the verge of snapping at bedtime. The dazes, the insulting sprees, the tantrums. One by one, the children began to break, or worse, be victimized by the most violent and criminal among them. And then they began in a procession sacrificing themselves to a nest of mega spiders in hopes of getting a taste of the insect jelly that lay therein. The children fought 
and one girl entered a murderous rage. Then the other children ganged up on her to save themselves. Everyone began fainting and sacrificing themselves to the mega spiders. They walked in a procession like lemmings to the north in their caves, drawn to the mysterious jelly. To save the children who were drawn to the mega spiders, I decided to launch an attack on their cave with all of our weak remaining youths. Unfortunately, almost everyone perished in battle, and we were totally unable to slay the mega spiders except one. Although one person did manage to get away with eating the insect jelly. Almost everyone fell except one boy named Zion, then later he fell in battle to a raccoon. The colony was totally destroyed, and no one remained. Attempt 3. They say the third time's the charm. This time, I start off with 1,200 packaged survival meals. After crash landing on the planet once again, we set out grow zones, deconstructed ruins, cut down trees, designated jobs, and then everyone set off to work, hauling and busying themselves. I sealed off the mega spider cave so that no one would sacrifice themselves again. Then I built them sleeping spots so that they all returned from the fields at night to sleep in a heap on the dirt by the mountainside. When dawn rose, they ate and ran through the fields. Then I ordered the construction of a hundred wooden beds all side by side. Another day of general labor and drawing all over the floor. On the third day, the food was running low. Many had stopped working and most of them were just drawing pictures on the ground. So I forced everyone to work from dawn till dusk so that they would plant enough food to harvest and survive. On the fourth day, as they planted the crops, two children nearly died in combat with the guinea pig until one girl named Harriet stabilized the wounds and saved the other children. The fourth day ended, and as some of the children began to grow mature, they acquired new traits. On the fifth day, the children hauled in stone chunks, and they constructed stone cutting workshops to hew building materials out of the sheer rock. The fifth day ended. On the sixth day, we completed our wall shortly before we were raided by a naked man wielding a heavy club. I drew the army of children back into the safe zone behind the walls. The raider approached and fell to the second spike trap in our entrance. Despite the most probable outcome that he would have slain many if it had come to blows, by preempting his attack, the amassed work of 100 pairs of hands saved us the trouble of directly dispatching him. The sixth day ended. On the seventh day, I began work on the dining room area, a project that started out simple but would drag on for weeks as I planned a nutrient paste dispenser to feed all of the children. Beyond that, I needed a room behind to store the rice, and I paved tiles to speed the comings and goings from the fields to the pantries and food stockpiles beside the dining room. As the day came to a close, we completed work on the nutrient paste dispenser and powered it with a wood fire generator. Now the children tasted the fruits of their labor in the fields. And even though the dining room lacked polish, it was a milestone. Now we were self-reliant for food and subsistence. From the 10th to the 11th, I expanded the planting, mined out more minerals, and paved a path for faster walking from the fields to the dining and stockpile areas. All the while, I started seeing our colony to its ultimate objective, the maturation of the children from helpless youths to full-grown adults, better able to look after themselves and their fellow colonists around them. As they grew, they acquired new traits when they reached the age of 13, but new problems arose when we had to plant cotton and make more clothing since there simply wasn't enough to go around. Work continued on the 12th and 13th, and as we muddled through our labor in the base and the plantation, we finally managed to complete roofing on our structures, the food stockpiles, the dining area, the barracks. Then at last we began consolidating our stockpiles onto granite shelves we built in the food storage to make clear the area for thousands of meals. As the days went on, more pawns matured to adulthood, the ultimate goal of the colony. Now they'd be able to research, teach the current and future children, and do a better job defending the colony from raiders with their fully matured capabilities. We got raided again, but there weren't any casualties. I think playing with Cassandra Classic as storyteller kept the raids small and manageable. After that, I built up wind turbines, shelves for denser storage, and a research lab at the back of the compound to begin studying battery power storage. Buzz. With our newly matured colonists. Now it was time to start preparing for a new generation of mature, adult colonists. I planted cotton for new clothes, I sealed off our power grid, and then I handled the last of the young people's mood breaks. Volatile and destructive. I planned workshops for tailoring garments and carving sculptures since colonists' expectations were rising as they began to crave a more decadent lifestyle. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the young people didn't get along and threw hands. 
literally at times. I might have lost a couple of them, but as I built the rec room and watched the rest of the colonists work, now freed of their childish limitations, I was authentically surprised that I had somehow managed to make a functioning colony of children in RimWorld while cheating only a few times and editing it out to make it look like I know what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian, and I suck at most video games and I have a lot of issues, but I overcompensate with my magnificent storytelling. A big thanks to my patrons, who are like children carrying rice to feed me with their funds and love. Until next time.